Morning. I don't know what the weather's like where you're at, but sunrise here, a little cloudy. Feels pretty warm though. Feels like it's going to be a good day. And being that this is a sunrise Sunday, I'm kind of looking forward to what God might do today. In His way, not my way. Because you see, my way, I'd probably sleep in or sleep around or lay around or just kind of <clears throat> veg out or couch out. You know, couch out, coach, kind of be like a coach couch. You know, sit there, watch football or something, sports, some golf or some extreme sports or some Mountain Dew. <clears throat> <clears throat> what you do really is up to you. God isn't going to condemn you for what you do today. He's not going to commend you for what you do today. The fact is, your own actions and reactions will commend you or condemn you before the Lord. You see, God gives you, most of all, in the reality of creation, a blessing. Every day He gives you oxygen to breathe. He gives you air, sunshine, light. He gives you a world that He created for you to enjoy and to be a part of. So I like to do that. I like to be a part of my world today. Oh, not in a greeny kind of way. Because you see, when you're a greeny, you're mixing politics with whatever it is you want to do. Creation or save the planet, save a tree, save the world, be healthy. Sometimes that echo kind of mentality isn't really what God intended for creation. Because He did give us a mind and an intellect. And how we choose to use it is our ability and our capability to walk with Him and to talk with Him, to have fellowship with Him, to be in a place where we can hear His voice and listen to what He would say. Because if He created it all, if He made the heavens above and the earth below, if He intended the sky to give us breath to breathe, I think He has a plan, and I think since He has a plan, there must be a purpose to that plan. So I like to think of like waking up in the morning on a Sunday like today, or any day as a matter of fact, What has God purposed in His plan for me today? What does He want me to know? Where does He want me to go? How does He want me to arrange my life since He arranged the heavens and the earth and placed them in their correct order, in their correct designated way with which they revolve and the way that the universe even is moving in a certain direction? That's a little bigger than I can handle. I'm struggling with my own little cup of coffee in the morning. So because I can't handle the universe and all of its ways, I trusted the Lord for that part. I give it to Him and let God, as creator of the universe, be in charge of the universe. A lot of times, I find that most of the things that I may be concerned about or worried about in my day usually have to do with his taking care of it rather than my worrying about it. I often just have to kind of like give it back to him so that he could do and deal with it than me try to figure it out, to think about, to worry about those things that I really can't do anything about. But I can pray and commit it unto him. And that's what I like to do in the morning is commit my way unto the Lord, to trust also in him and allow him to bring it to pass. So, Father, I thank you for today. Show me the way. Hey, see how easy that was to pray? That's the way I am. Whatever is pure, whatever is holy, whatsoever is virtue and of praise, if there be any positive way of looking at it in some way, I don't mean the power of positive thinking, but I mean, you know, thinking about it in a way that reflects how I view things from God's point of view, then I like to do that because He seems to have a way of filling my cup 
to overflowing, to giving me joy in the morning, to causing me to look at my day as arranged by him and causing my footsteps to be put in place so that I don't need to trip or stumble or fall over anything that's in my way, but I can walk around it if he tells me to go that way. Now, maybe that's not for you. Maybe God has something in store for you, and maybe you have something in store for God. I only know that for me, because I choose to listen to what he might say to me, I like to look into his word, to hear his voice, to understand what it is the Spirit of God might lead me today to do with him what he has chosen for me as I have given him my life to follow in his will, his way, for his purpose and his plan. The fruit of the Spirit is meekness. The meek shall increase their joy in the Lord, and the poor among men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. Except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. The ornament of a meek and quiet spirit is in the sight of God of great price. Charity vaunteth not itself, and it is not puffed up. Follow after meekness. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who when he was reviled, reviled not again but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. And all of these are from Galatians 5, 22, Isaiah 29, 19, Matthew 18, 3 and 4, 1 Peter 3, 4, 1 Corinthians 13, 4, 1 Timothy 6, 11, Matthew 11, 29, Isaiah 53, 7, and 1 Peter 2, 21 through 23. When I consider meekness, I know that most Americans have no clue what a meek person really is. We often think of meekness as weakness, and we don't treat it with such respect as what it should be. And there are other cultures that, quite frankly, are meek, and they have that inherent quality to be perceived as, unfortunately, weak and Americanized, but meek in, though they be Americans themselves, they are often not seen as a virtuous person or a virtuous way of being. And that's why it's so contrary sometimes to our physical nature and our mental assertions to become like Jesus. Because to become like Jesus means to humble ourselves. And most people don't like the process of humility, much less the way with which God seems to bring humility about. If you really want to understand meekness gentleness, kindness. James is a great book to read. Have fun. But the meekness isn't meant to be like treated as detrimental, but as objective of our dissertation with which we seek to follow after Jesus, to become like him, to realize that it's not so important our assertions as our desertion of our own nature of who we are so that he can be what he is in us. We need to become less of ourselves and more of him. We need to be not so much concerned about ourselves and our own needs, wants, desires and ministries, cares, whatever it may be, but what we can be like Jesus in giving up of ourselves for the sake of others. That we might lay down our lives to serve others that we might be the lowliest of low, that he might be the greatest of all those that are elevated. Because we're told that if we would humble ourselves in due time, in due season, he would lift us up. 
But is that really why you want to humble yourself? Because if it is, then you're not meek. You see, the meek recognize that in me there dwelleth no good thing. But whatsoever good there is that comes out of me is from him. And so he is our righteousness. He is our strength. He is our absolute allness. Everything that we have, whatsoever it is of pureness or holiness or gentleness or kindness or meekness or love or peace or joy, really comes from Him. So we need to turn our lives around. Maybe not think of ourselves as like the hero or the member of the team, you know, the football star, the baseball star, the star at all. But rather, we need to think of ourselves as the water boy. You know, helping the other team members to go do their thing so that we could do what God wants us to do. Refresh those who are out doing and enjoying what they need or think that is most important in their life, though it may be an idol without realizing it. Because that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. We need to seek after the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And these other things, yes, they'd be added to us, but they'd be put in their proper place. Because there may not be so much wrong with being an athletic sports star, but elevating them as the hero of our faith, that might be a wrong perspective. Because you'll soon find that those types of heroes, if you lift them up, fall flat on their face when it comes to the reality of looking at Jesus and how he lived his life according to his Father's will. So though we are not perfect and we seek to follow after Jesus, we need to recognize that it's not our will to be done, but his will. So today I like to think about that. Take that as my Sunday sunrise. To consider my day as turned over to him in a way that maybe I might not attain to weakness today and maybe not tomorrow. But I know that if I ask God to do it in me, then along the way, he's going to work on that part of me that perhaps is very prideful and not so meek as it ought to be. So God, I ask that in some way, today, as you hear my voice and I hear yours, you would work in me your spirit that he would cause me to become likened unto the meekness that Jesus had. So God, I would no longer be of myself, for myself, by myself, and in myself, but rather, O oh Lord, my God. It would be you who is accomplishing your work in me, both to do and to will of your good pleasure, that I would no longer be self-determinant, selfish, or self-centered, but rather I would give up myself, deny myself, and become likened unto you. The meekness of God. God bless you. I hope you become slowly, in some way, the meek. For blessed are the meek. But I do pray also that if you are meek, don't be discouraged because you feel as though you're not exalted. Oh no. Rather recognize that, likened unto little children, your meekness has become a badge of honor, and it's a glory of God to see you that he has accomplished in placing you as an example for the rest of us to learn how to become meek.